Let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. Yes, you've got a four of them. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt, the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy because, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps. The green flag is waving. Hello again. It's Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Right on our strength, talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. And we are so glad that you have joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post zooming our way through 2020. Aaron, how are you? I'm doing great. How have you been? I've been fantastic. Really, really good. I got to some dirt track racing, went to Cherokee and saw the uh, the, the Modifieds race. Uh, I've got some more racing coming up this weekend. Got some NASCAR racing. Of course, tonight is the Truck Series at, uh, at uh, Charlotte. So um, it's not normal, but it's racing, but it's closer. And I'm really, really good. Really, really happy. How are you? I'm good. I've been enjoying a lot of uh, racing through the internet, through streaming down here yeah. in Florida. Can't yeah. complain been at the beach so i haven't been nearly as busy as you have been but you've been seen a lot more real racing than i have it's been good it's been real good that's for sure let's get right to it our classic ink screen printing embroidery hot topics we have got a great show for you by the way uh one of our hot topics danny dietrich going to the all-stars we're going to talk to danny in a little bit uh kyle larson going to join us in just a little bit as well aaron i kind of wanted to take this time though with the hot topics to 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 kind of talk about where we're at um we're all over the map with racing um there are there are states that are open okay and there are states that are not open and yet i'm not sure it even matters anymore um the folks in north carolina and the folks in pennsylvania have just said to heck with it we're going racing and uh we got to see a race last night at the fabulous lincoln speedway and they've got a couple races this weekend it's 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 fascinating times it really is it is fascinating times, and it's uh, it's exciting and confusing because every yeah. series, every track has a different schedule now. So you really have to pay attention to social media to keep up on where they're headed and who's actually racing and whose race has been canceled and what's going on. It's kind of wild. It is kind of wild with the racing. I've already missed two meetings today that I wasn't even aware that I had because of meetings <laughs> getting moved and shifted around. I'm just glad I'm here talking about it. Uh, this, this fascinates me, and I, and I don't want to get all political on everybody because Lord knows we're sprint cars. But a state senator, Doug Mastriano, up in Pennsylvania, uh, got in front of the crowd at the fabulous Lincoln Speedway and said, the governor's commission said we can't hold the race. I say to him, hold my beer. <laughs> Boy, talking to preach into the choir in Pennsylvania, man, he, uh, he got a rousing applause from the fans there, that's for sure. I'm sure he did in Pennsylvania. Yeah, no doubt. It is fascinating. Uh, the little track that I started at, Pencan Speedway, they opened up to a huge crowd on Sunday night. It was a rain day from Friday. Uh, a roaring knob's been running the last few weeks, so I guess everyone's just kind of like, well, if they're going to run, I'm going to run. And we'll see if there's repercussions. Who knows what's going to happen. Um, it's like the horse is out of the barn, though, it seems like to me, at least in Pennsylvania and, and actually in North Carolina, an asphalt track, a speedway ran, and, and they had wall-to-wall people as well under under lockdown orders. So crazy, crazy times for sure. It really is. And, you know, I don't even care about the politics anymore. I, obviously, it's important, but I don't. At this point, I just hope that everyone stays healthy and the numbers keep declining so we can just keep moving forward. Exactly. That is the case. That is for sure. There you have it, our Classic Ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics, www.classicinkusa, offering full custom driver apparel and crew wear options, full service embroidery department specializing in headwear and outerwear, and they have an experienced design team and a dedicated sales department as well. They do, and it's not just for racing. Local businesses, school districts, sports teams, you name it. A lot of people use Classic Inc. Drivers including Sheldon Hodenshield, Donnie Schatz, Danny Dietrich, David Stremme with Lethal Chassis, Tony Stewart, Brian Brown, and many more. You can go to www.classicinkusa.com for more information. There you have it. Great stuff from Classic Inc. We'll talk to that Danny Dietrich, who uses Classic Inc. a little bit later on the program. Kyle Larson going to join us in just a little bit. He was at Peavley. Dirt Vision was at Peavley. 
Johnny Gibson was at Peevely. And now we're taking you to Peevely with our Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf Defying Move of the Week. And now for the Dry Dean Deaf Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. We've got traffic and we'll have five to go when they come back to the line. Larson looked to the inside, goes down low and steals the lead. Kyle Larson leads with five to go. Sweet right back to his inside. Brad Sweet takes the lead back. That Deaf Defying Move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Team Dryden. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. I hope you caught the World of Outlaws racing at Peebly this past weekend. If you did, you caught some hellaciously good racing between a lot of really great race car drivers, including our first guest, Kyle Larson, joins us back on Wing Nation. Hey, Kyle, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Doing really, really well. Not only sliding down between the frame rails of a sprint car, but climbing on the wing with a limited crowd there. I am telling you, that had to be pretty cool this past weekend up at uh, up at Peavley. Yeah, definitely. It was, uh, you know, uh, some great racing both nights. Um, and two, yeah, having a having the first race back with fans was was awesome as well. You know, it was a little awkward at Knoxville and then Jackson with with you know nobody there it was just silent so it, it was good to hear the the crowd cheering again and and you know watching them enjoy themselves so um yeah great weekend great track uh was was happy to finally get my opportunity to race there and um the place definitely didn't disappoint Kyle was that your first time racing there ever I, I knew it was your first time with the outlaws was it your first time ever yeah yeah I'd never I'd never been there before um oh you know a lot of people I've always wanted to because a lot of my friends who race who race there say it's one of their favorite tracks. So um, definitely was cool to be there. Um, it was kind of hard to compare it to anything, maybe like a smaller Lawrenceburg or, or Tulare kind of characteristics too. So um, definitely a track that you know suits my driving style. Okay, so time out, time out. Okay, you you go there. You've never been there before. You run your three hot laps. And the next lap on the track was a new track record under 10 seconds. What was that lap like? Did it, what did it feel like? What, I mean, how did you do that? <laughs> uh, well, my car was really fast <laughs> and the track conditions were good for, you know, how early I went out. So um, it, it worked out, you know, honestly, the, the first lap I ran, I knew the track record was like a 10-1, you know, I'd watched Logan's lap from last year. And uh, when Gravel ran a 10-1, you know, he qualifies so well that, you know, when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's going to be hard to beat. Um, but then, you know, my first lap, you know, I felt like I took it pretty easy and I, and I was able to beat, beat Gravel's time and be close to the track record. So I knew my next lap, um, you know, was going to be wide open. And, and I knew if I didn't, you know, move my arms too much, uh, I, I could run a fast lap. I was not expecting to see a nine second lap. Honestly, I thought the board broke because uh, there was a bunch of nines. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was cool. Definitely, definitely need to to do something that that nobody's ever done there. You know, the first driver to be in the nine second bracket at a, at a track is, uh, or the only guy I guess to do it is is definitely special. I'm getting a little sidetracked, but did, how did you know your first lap time? Did you see a board or someone tell you? They tell you on the race receiver now. Uh, no, you could see the board in the turn one. <laughs> um, so. 
you can take it. I mean, you, you've driven before, so you can take a quick yeah. glance. And, and I wasn't see. talented enough to look up at the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it, the board's in a nice spot, so you get a, you get a couple seconds to take a look. This reminds me of you guys running down the front stretch at the Chili Bowl and watching the big screen. I'm like, you, I mean, that just I, I boggles my mind uh, processing all that you guys do. But that's uh, that's that that's the skill set. So so you get out there, you have a uh, you have a solid opening night and an even better uh, Saturday night. Uh, how'd you find the track race? Uh, how different were the two nights? What'd you what what would you learn there between the two nights at Peebley? Yeah, the the, the track conditions were were way different between the two nights. You know, the first night was, was surprising, you know, that it stayed really fast all night. Um, you know, typically when I watch video of that place, it seems like they have to get the, the equipment out there to re-prep it a lot like they did the second night. So um, the first night was fast, you know, fast paced. Uh, you know, my head was buried against the seat because the, the corners were so fast. So, um, but it was, it was quick and, and really exciting race in there with, with Brad and Jacob and uh, was able to, to you know, battle Brad there late, but I uh, just didn't have what it what I needed to to get by him and stay in front of him. Um, and then the next night, you know, qualifying was uh, really slick. The pace fell fell off a lot. You know, a couple seconds just in the first flight. And then uh, you know they they did their best to work on the track and got it a lot better. And and come main event time, you know, it was it was really racy and you, you saw a lot of slide jobs and stuff from people and um, you know lap traffic getting into lap traffic that fast you know four four or five laps you're to the back of the field is a lot of fun as a driver um so yeah it was it was definitely great racing and um you know, it was it was like I said it was cool to finally get my chance to race that that's awesome Kyle I watched on dirt vision but today when I was reading back to the story of the race it said that you actually broke your Jacobs ladder on lap 10 is that right? yeah uh yeah I got we had that restart and uh when I got by Brad and I was you know, just trying to track down Sheldon I caught the I caught the gate down the back stretch and uh yeah it's for a couple laps I was like I thought my right rear was going low um so I was just kind of taking it easy because I didn't want to you know have the tire explode in a bad spot in the corner or whatever but once I realized that it was just the Jacobs ladder um yeah I could start running it harder to, to try and free my free myself up and uh it, it worked out it was definitely it makes you know the, the win was was so satisfying in itself but to to overcome, you know, a broken part uh, and still win an outlaw race was uh, was really cool. Again, I'm going to repeat, watching scoreboards, watching television monitors, broken race cars. This is why race car drivers do what race car drivers do and the rest of us love and watch it. I mean, that's 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 just an amazing part of it. And another amazing part of it was was mixing it up with your brother-in-law, with Brad Sweet. Um, man, he has he has developed over the last few years. Is is just probably you know him him and Shots are probably the premier sprint car drivers. What's that like racing against Brad? It's fun. Uh, it's frustrating too because he is so good, and and you know he's just got a lot of confidence right now. He's extremely focused um, and. You know, he understands, you know, all aspects of being a driver and, you know, understands the race car, too, and can, can you know, know what he needs to do. And I think that makes him really strong and stand out um, compared to others. So um, it's been it's been really cool to, to see, you know, how well he's been doing these last few years. And, um, you know, to win an Outlaw Championship, to beat Donnie Schatz uh, is, is unbelievable. Um, you know, winning the Nationals, a couple Kings Royals is is he's got a, a great you know resume already and he's you know still in his mid-30s so um no it's it's cool and and when you get to battle him too and, and race up front and uh challenge him for wins is, is awesome we've had a lot of great battles over the years and uh you know i beat him some he's beat me in others so uh it's it's a fun little family rivalry i guess and and yeah uh but we love each other too so it's uh it just makes it a lot of fun to race him got to be a little difficult for Caitlin to watch all, watch all of that. Kyle, yeah. when you got out of the car, you gave Paul Silva a, a big hug, and he's your car owner, crew chief, I, I believe. Um, you guys have had a great relationship, but every time you two hit the track, and you don't even have to race sprint cars for months, you guys are just bad fast. Talk about your relationship with Paul a little bit. Yeah, he's just, uh, you know, Paul means so much to me. Um, you know, he's one of my best friends. He's, uh, you know, one of my mentors you know just on on life stuff you know he's so smart when it comes to 
you know, just life and, and all that. So, um, and then, you know, too, our relationship when it comes to racing is, is special to me because I've been with him a long time. We've had a lot of success together. Um, and, you know, I just believe in everything that he does. You know, I don't, I don't think there's another crew chief car owner out there that's better than him and, and, you know, smarter than he is about, you know, owning and, and running all the business side of the, of the race team. So, um, just, thankful that I'm a, I'm a part of him and he's, he's stuck with me now for so long. And, um, I hope, you know, we can both still have a long career together. Um, you know, he's only in his mid thirties also. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid twenties, so we can still have a, a very long career together. So, um, you know, we'll see what, uh, where, what, what we end up doing, but, um, you know, it's, it's great to be with him and, and I, I wouldn't be, as successful as I am without him, you know, I think you can look at, at times when I go to you know Australia or, or wherever and, and hop in somebody else's sprint car, I'm, I'm not nearly as good. So, um, and then now having him, you know, part of my midget team, you know, I think, you know, that, that shows just how good he is from never working on a midget before to, to do what we did last season, just, uh, you know, shows how, how strong he is. And I, and I honestly believe I would not be Kyle Larson without Paul Silva. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. How much you talked about Brad racing with confidence. How much is that confidence important to you knowing that Paul is turning the wrenches on the midget car, which you went and won the chili bowl with him. And then, and then now with your, with your world of outlaw, how important is the confidence for you and, and how are you doing in that category? Yeah. I mean, having Paul, um, you know, brings, you know, just naturally brings a lot of confidence to you. Um, but, but honestly, I mean, I, up until, you know, midway through Friday night, I, I haven't had any confidence, uh, in a sprint car. You know, we've, we've struggled. Um, you know, I, I struggled in Australia. Then I came back to the States, went to Volusia and we, we struggled. Um, then, you know, Knoxville and Jackson, both, we were really bad. So, um, you know, I, I knew going to Peebley was a, was a, it was a good time for us to get there because I knew it was a track that, you know, he's had success with Rico at, um, and, and even with me never being there before, it just looks like a track that would suit me. So, um, but still it was hard to get confidence going there just because of, you know, how bad we've struggled so far this year. So, um, you know, having two good nights, uh, really helps the confidence. And I hope that confidence can, can carry on to the other types of racetracks we go to. Kyle, you mentioned the the fans, some fans, limited fans being there and how, how nice that was. But you also mentioned Rico, your brother-in-law, all these friends that you have in the sprint car world. How nice, especially for us that have still kind of been locked down, how nice has it been to just be in the pit area and be with that that racing family? Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's been great. Um, you know, at Knoxville, uh, you know, there was no fans. And I feel like all the drivers you know, and teams did their part to still, you know, socially distance each other. Uh, from everyone and uh, you know nobody really left their trailer so you you were there competing with your friends but you didn't really get to go talk to them but um, it seems like as each week's gone by it's gotten more more normal so um, it's been nice though to, to you know hang out with my friends and in the sprint car world just because you know a, a lot of the drivers are in the sprint car racing community are are some of my best friends so um, getting to getting to race with them and then you know, just hang out in the pit area or at the hotels or whatever uh, it's been a lot of fun. So it seems like life's getting back to normal and, and, you know, I'm enjoying it and enjoying traveling you know, down the road. We, we, uh, we made our first long road trip as a family from, from Mooresville to, to Missouri now this week. So um, that was fun and, and just getting to do things that we haven't done in a long time. So neat. So neat. Kyle, obviously it's been uh, quite a roller coaster for you uh, over the course of this year. Uh, and, and so much has been said about what's all gone on in your life. It's, uh, it's, it, it's been one of the hot topics in the sport. One of the things that's not been talked a lot is, is some of the people who have supported you. Uh, we've had, you know, Finley Farms jumped up. One of our partners, Plan B Sales, Brent, jumped up, stayed on board with you. And particularly the sprint car fans have just rallied around you. What has that been like? What has that meant to you over the last, uh, over the last six or eight weeks? It's meant the world to me, you know, I, I obviously I've gone through a lot here lately and, and, you know, lost a lot of my, my partners, which I, I fully understand, but, but the ones who, who stuck by me, uh, it, it just means the world, you know, to have that support from, from people and fans and 
friends and family. It's just, uh, that's, that's what's really helped me, you know, kind of get by and stay positive through this all. You know, it's been, it's been life changing, no doubt. Um, but, but the support of, of everybody is, like I said, it's really helped, you know, get me by and, and, you know, Caitlin and, and, you know, the kids don't know what's going on, but, but still just, uh, trying to getting that support from, from everybody, you know, helps me, you know, kind of stay strong and be, you know, a dad still. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just, it, it's tough, but, but like I said, the support, it, it, you know, I, I, it's hard to be positive, but the support really helps. For sure. For sure. I'll let you answer this one. However you want to the future this weekend or down the road, what do you got planned? <laughs> What's going on? And, uh, when, when, when are we going to see you on the racetrack again? Uh, well, we'll be at Lake Ozark, uh, you know, this weekend with the outlaws. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, we have, we have, I think the next like four weekends or so planned out. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy to be racing race cars, uh, right now. Um, you know, it's been, it's been weird watching the NASCAR stuff on TV, but, but I also, you know, hope that I'll still be able to have another opportunity to race in, in cup someday. Um, so, you know, taking this time to, to watch and still study and stay, you know, relevant in my own mind. Uh, that way, whenever an opportunity comes up, you know, I'll be ready to, to, you know, take full advantage of, of that opportunity and do a good job. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm just really happy to be racing cars and racing sprint cars. You know, the outlaws have been also a great supporter of mine through this. So, um, being able to compete with them, um, you know, is it's special to me. So, um, but yeah, as far as, you know, past the next four weeks, I don't know what, I don't know what races there are even planned, uh, in the world right now. But, um, you know, Paul and I, we just, we just kind of plan on hitting whatever races make the most sense to us. None of us know what's happening beyond that. That's for sure. Doesn't matter. Kyle, uh, as always, we appreciate your time. Uh, we congratulate you on the win and getting back behind the wheel of a race car, but I appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us here on wing nation. Yeah. Thank you guys. There we go. Kyle Larson joining us here on the show. Always great to hear from Kyle Larson, and uh, one of his partners, as we mentioned, is one of our partners. Plan B Sales, uh, founded in 2010 by Brent and LaDonna Powell, and uh, they're proud to be supporting Kyle Larson. They uh, had a phone conversation. I know that uh, Brent and Kyle have talked to each other, and uh, Brent has made the decision that his business, and it's right on Kyle's sleeve, uh, as he as he wheels that sprint car around, uh, great great uh, great great distributor of diecast and of uh, apparel items, Sam Bass artwork, uh, all kinds of stuff. So uh, give him a shout. Check him out at www.planbsales. Use the promo code MRN for free shipping on orders over twenty dollars. Stay with us, more Wing Nation in just a moment. Hey Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Joining us now from, uh, I believe he told us, Missouri, doing some maintenance on the car, our friend from Pennsylvania, Danny Dietrich. Hello, Danny. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. All right, so wait a minute. Pennsylvania is opening back up, but you're in Missouri. What in the wide world of sports is going on? Well, uh, we kind of, we came out here to run Peebly and, and didn't want to drive back yet because, you know, we felt like Lincoln did a one-off race, and I know they're planning on a race this weekend, but, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to say what's going to happen, what our governor will do now that we they have raced. Um, I think they did a good job last night by watching. But, uh, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of racing coming up out here in the next three weekends. There's ten races, and, and uh, we've signed up with the All-Stars. Um, we were 
we were kind of in a situation where we didn't know what Pennsylvania was going to do after this coming weekend or this past weekend. And, and um, you know, we joined to kind of cover all our bases. I mean, we could still go home. We could go to the All-Stars. we we got a lot of options right now. Mm. So, Danny, the, the All-Stars start a big swing coming up this weekend. There's like, you know, 10 races in 17 days or whatever the stat is. Did you bring enough – I mean, obviously with sprint cars, you can get stuff anywhere in the Midwest. You put – I mean, do you have to go back to Pennsylvania? Are you guys set to just go for now? Uh, we're pretty set. You know, we got a couple cars with us. We got a few motors with us. Um, you know, Jake's out here for now. We got to probably talk to his boss, depending on how long this goes out here. Uh, <laughs> my nephew's out here. We we kind of loaded up and uh, didn't know when we were going to be home. You know, when I left work, my dad and brother were kind of like, well, well, we'll see you when we see you, you know. So, um you know, we got we got plenty of equipment. I think as long as we don't we don't go into a spree of tearing stuff up. But you know, like I said, you know, we'll we'll know better here at the end of the week where we're going to be. You know, right now, I guess we're an all star. Um, you know, and and uh, we like to have options. So we're not we're not uh, saying we're going to stay out here for the long haul. But you know, we have the option to stay out here for the long haul. You know, it's kind of a we're gonna we're gonna see where our best best racing is going to be. Danny, under a normal situation, this may not happen because there's so much racing in Pennsylvania. But but is this all just a just a factor of the all all star thing and you sitting in Missouri doing maintenance? Is this really just a factor of COVID nineteen and 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 your home state being one of the one of the slow to open states? Yeah, I mean, you know, this this COVID deal and. Uh... You know, we don't know what our governor's going to do. I mean, everything I thought went well last night, but <clears throat> he could turn around uh, and say, you know, this is this is your warning, you know, and uh, you, know, you guys can't go racing again, I guess. You know, nobody knows. So uh, we come out here, we're, we're just hanging out. You know, Gary's got a house here in, in Memphis, Missouri, and, um, you know, it's free to stay and, and enjoy ourselves and, um, you know, I have a few cocktails, ride some four-wheelers and rangers around. We, we probably rode about 80 miles yesterday on these back roads and stone roads and just enjoyed ourselves uh, for a great Memorial Day holiday. Nice. Danny, to kind of add on to Steve's question, you know, he said you know, there's tons of racing in Pennsylvania. You can sleep in your own bed. You can, you know, win a lot of money, win some big races. But is there the goal to, to be on the road more eventually? Or are you happy racing in that, that area of Pennsylvania? Do you ever want to do outlaws or no. – I I'd, I'd like to uh I like sleeping in my own bed. I like being home and uh being close to home so Gary can watch the car race. You know, he he's a busy guy, but uh ultimately right now we've missed three months of racing and, and we wanna put ourselves in position to race as much as we can and, and I think on all star racing, you know, uh if Pennsylvania doesn't get going here really soon, ten races in three weeks is pretty good, especially once you get past this weekend and there's there's uh eight races in eleven days. You know, that's that's something uh, that says a lot for the All-Stars and what people think and the respect they have for the All-Stars, you know, to, to have them tracks down in Oklahoma and Texas and Kansas really support you. That's that's huge, I think. But ultimately, you know, Gary's in Pennsylvania. Uh, the Weigert's in Pennsylvania. Family's in Pennsylvania. Our work's in Pennsylvania. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, we don't, we don't know what's going to happen here the next three weeks. Um, but I think by, you know, Thursday, we're going to have to make up our mind. We Like I said, we're an All-Star now, but Basically, we just had to have our options open as far as, you know, what we could do going forward. We didn't want to be stuck not being an all-star member and end up racing 10 races out here. Then we've got Ohio Speed Week. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're into the end of July. And really, that's the only thing you'd have to – you'd have to give up your end of the end of the month there in July to go, to go west with the all-stars. But, you know, because by the time you come back from Knoxville, the all-stars are in Pennsylvania again, and then they're in Pennsylvania in September – you know, it, you don't give that much up. So, you know, we looked at the schedule, um, you know, what do you want to give up to gain? And, and the All-Stars, we know how many races they got to have to have a full, full points payout. And, um, you know, we're just trying to play our cards right right now make sure we have as many opportunities as we can to race. Danny, the last couple of weeks you've been with the World of Outlaw Tour. You've been uh, out of Knoxville and then uh, and then to, uh, to to Peebley this weekend. How do you feel about your overall speed? How do you How do you think things are going for you so far? Well, I think we've we've had really good speed. You know, the results don't show because I think there's so many factors to play in. But I mean, that uh, the deal with Peebley was so tough. I mean, you got you got 60 cars there, and I'd say 45 of them, if they got their car right, the drivers are capable of winning. And um, you know, we're in a B main racing with Donnie Schatz and Brian Brown and Aaron Reitzel and uh, Paul McMahon and David Gravel. I mean, 
think about that for a minute, you know, and, and we missed it by one, but we had a really good car. Um, I made one mistake racing with David. It got me balled up in the, in the cushion and, and Aaron took advantage of it. And, and when you're racing with those guys, you, you can't make a mistake. So, uh, you know, it's part of it. Um, we've been, we've been fast. We've been happy with our speed. We just need to roll into the weekend wherever we, we may go with uh, good speed as well. Danny, running with the Outlaws and running new tracks like this or, or with the All-Stars in different tracks, you know, if you do end up going back to Pennsylvania, how much of an advantage is that? I mean, to, to me, it seems like a no-brainer. You're racing against some of the best in the country on new facilities, but when you bring it back home, it gives you that much more knowledge and confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, we just need to get back to uh, – if we go back home, we got to get back into our basics of what we normally do. We know what we normally do has speed. You know, out here you do a lot of different stuff, um, a lot of different racetracks, a lot of different uh, – bankings and layouts and stuff like that so just have to get back into um the standard at home and and uh, get back to, to the winning ways i think uh wherever we go you got to adapt really well so that's something that i think we've done really well over the last three or four years is being able to go on the road and and win races you know and and um you know we we won a couple off off the porch so to say last year against some of the best and uh you know i think we're capable of doing it out here we just uh everything's got to play your play out right well, no doubt about it. We got to get some racing in, and uh, you're you're. Uh, we had uh, we had Mark Smith on last week, who moved to Mississippi or Louisiana. Now we got you temporarily residing in Missouri. So uh, got to go where the race cars are, or racing is. So, Danny, uh, as always, we appreciate the time, appreciate the insight, and uh, good luck with that engine change you're working on later on today. Yep, thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. There we go, Danny Dietrich joining us here on Wing Nation. <laughs> Always great to chat with Double D, Danny Dietrich. You know, HRP Sprint Cars, they know sprint car racing, and uh, they know what works best for your racing team. Uh, when it comes to trailer and shop accessories, no other accessories can match quality, performance, and design. You know, top trailer builders, they use HRP trailer accessories to outfit their stock and custom-built units. And they're always adding to the accessories you could add, like the new cordless tool charging station. This thing is sleek in design, holds two cordless drills, impacts or fast flashlights, and battery chargers. Man, it keeps the clutter off your workbench. Check them out at www.hrpracing.com. That's hrpracing.com. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Our team driving. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation. So glad that you've joined us. Have you ever heard the FPS 410 Sprint Car Engine? If you haven't, you will. It's the result of a collaboration between Ford Performance, Tony Stewart Racing, and Durham Racing Engines. Tony Stewart used it in his team sprint car for the first time in mid-August of last year. And a few weeks later, Tony Stewart Racing scored the first World of Outlaw 410 equipped victory with Donnie Schatz behind the wheel. And Aaron, want to know what is there? Tell us, Aaron, what is in the FPS Ford's future. Well, the goal is an engine that can challenge for victories in series across the country as part of a Ford Performance customer program. Now that sounds like a winner. Absolutely. Our friends at Ford bringing it to sprint car racing for sure. Now, when we talk about sprint car racing, we absolutely love that piece of property, turn number two, on the Marion County Fairgrounds, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Some great, great stuff out there honoring some great, great champions and uh, Hall of Famers, if you will. Uh, birthdays later this week, Dr. Dick Bergren, Eddie Sachs, Deb Snyder, Davey Brown has a birthday coming up later this week. So I know they'll be celebrating up in Pennsylvania 
probably have some really good cake. Uh, today, Jack Gunn and Casey Luna's birthday. And how about this? 2006 inductee Jimmy Sills. Now, Jimmy played football in North Carolina prior to moving back to North, uh, California. And over the course of his career, he had more than 300 wins in every form of open wheel car. He is the all-time track winner at Badland, or Baylands Raceway. Okay, he had big wins at the Jayhawk Nationals, the Paris Oval Nationals, and he's even won the Grand Annual Classic down in Warrnambool, Australia. He was the 1986 Ohio Speed Week champion, driving for Bob Weicker, wins in every series, and yes, even has a book written by Dave Argerbright called Life with Luke with his racing name, Luke Warmwater. Uh, Jimmy Sills there and one of the iconic drivers um, uh, honored in, in, in Knoxville. Absolutely. I mean, his, his career was incredible. If you, if you read Dave's book or just any of his stats, and he was such a, a, a good character, too. He's done so much for our sport in all different ways. Yeah, no doubt. Very, very good Bird personality. I have the book somewhere here. I was, I was thinking about holding it up. Well, with my clutter and everything like that, I can't find it. So, uh, so there, so there you have it. So, uh, yeah, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Okay, uh, upcoming uh, in their schedule is an August first. Uh, let's see, August first is the induction ceremony. Aaron, uh, it's going to be a big time out at the Hall of Fame when uh, when we do that. It sure are. You know, this year's inductees are Greg Hodnett, Tim Schaefer, Jeff Swindell, Don Lamberti, Spencer Riggs, Walt Dyer, Paul Leffler, and Bill Cummings. Mm, man, I'll tell you what, SprintCarHOF.com, SprintCarHOF.com, or the uh, Sprint Car Stuff is the spot you can go to get the good stuff. Now, okay, this week, we've been warning you, we've been telling you, this week is your last week to get in on the Hercules Tire Spring Rebate. That's right, with a qualified purchase of four tires, uh, you can get up to $70 in a Visa gift card. So uh, HerculesTires.com slash spring rebate. It ends this weekend with the end of the month. Aaron, it's been a blast. Really cool to catch back up with Kyle Larson and, uh, and, and see what's going on in his world for sure. Yeah, that was really neat and to see him get the win this weekend and how emotional it was for him. Uh, and just to see him back driving sprint cars and, and he's living in Missouri. And then our other guest, Danny Dietrich, is living in Missouri. Like, our, you know, we talk about our world being upside down, but we got a kid from California who lives in North Carolina in Missouri and then yeah. a Pennsylvania Posse driver living in Missouri. Pretty wild. Obviously quite a journey that Kyle Larson is on. I, I, when I was thinking about this, when we knew we had the chance to grab him, I was thinking about this. It was Trophy Cup, I think 2013, 2014, and Wing Nation, uh, one of the first interviews as Kyle Larson climbed the ladder. Kendra and I, we talked to this kid from California, and that was really, really neat. And uh, he's back climbing the ladder, it looks like, again. And uh, really cool to catch up with Kyle and see what he's doing. And never a dull moment when we catch up with Danny Dietrich, uh, him and the crew – Hanging out there. Um, folks, if you're watching the video, don't go back and look over Danny's right shoulder at the crew. Um, don't do that. I'm. If you're watching the video, don't do that. Oh, It'll gosh. burn your retinas or something. Hey, at least so. we got Danny to put a shirt on. I mean, he was trying well, to do an interview without the shirt. Well, yeah, when we first dialed him up, he had no shirt on. We yelled at him, put a shirt on. So he went and did that anyhow. So, uh, yeah, sprint car drivers being sprint car drivers, and that's why we love them so much. Danny talked about the All-Stars, and the All-Stars have announced a big swing down through Texas, Louisiana, Kansas, and Oklahoma. When we return on Thursday, Blake Anderson is going to join us to talk about announcing at some new tracks and really just kind of what's going on with him and with the All-Stars. Always love when we catch up with Blake Anderson, one of the really good guys and one of the talented young announcers in the sport. He really is. And I love his perspective because he's so knowledgeable about our sport. You know, he, he, he truly has a passion for it. He certainly does. So he'll be joining us on our show on a Thursday, on our Wing Nation show on Thursday. And on Saturday morning, Brad Doty joins Ashley and I over on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit on Math TV, 7.30 and 10.30 Eastern Time. Again, we appreciate Kyle Larson and Danny Dietrich for joining us. More important than all of that, thank you for joining us here today on the Wing Nation. Wing Nation has been brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our string. Watch Wing Nation Saturday mornings on MAV TV. You can also find Wing Nation on wingnation.com or your favorite podcast provider. Wing Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.